All right, good morning. It is 8.20 a.m. on April 14th, 2020. And um, I, I was just looking at something here. And it is Donald Trump's Twitter feed. And this tweet that he put out yesterday um, is very alarming. Now, I I have been a you know, a Trump supporter. Not uh, well. I've, been, I've I've supported Trump. I voted for him at the time. Uh, well, at the time it was the enemy of my enemy is my friend. I knew that Trump was a wild card because I didn't trust anybody else that was running. I do vote in every election. Um, I have been undeclared. Let me back up. I, I started out voting at 18 and I was a Republican all the way up until Bush Jr.'s second term, at which point I left the Republican Party and did not become affiliated uh, with another party and have not been since then. Um, that being said, I, I generally would vote for the Libertarian or you know, the occasional whatever I would I voted I think I can remember two Democrats that I voted for <laughs> uh, a lot of times they are Republicans um, but I just want you to let, let's read this here for the purpose of creating conflict and confusion some in the fake news media are saying that it is the governor's decision to open up the states, not that of the President of the United States and federal government. Let it be fully understood that this is incorrect. Now, everyone, if, it, if that was Barack Obama that said that, what would you be saying? If it was George Bush that said that, what would you be saying? Bill Clinton. Um, <laughs> we would not be happy. We would not be happy about this. This is saying that this federal bureaucracy has more control over everything than the governors of our states do. For the purpose of creating conflict and confusion. Yeah, you know, fake news, they may be fake in whatever, saying that it's the governor's decision. Because right here, the president is saying that it's his his choice and the federal government. So then I, I started going down and I, I, I looked at a couple more. I, I'm gonna go through more than what I looked at because I only looked at there's a at these first few and uh, You know, some of these, okay, same same sort of stuff. I'm working hard to expose the corruption and dishonesty in the lamestream media. Maybe. But then look at this one here, April 12th. For the first time in history, there is a fully signed presidential disaster declaration for all 50 states. We are winning and will win the 
war on the invisible enemy. For those of you that don't know, um, a fully signed presidential disaster declaration for all 50 states basically puts FEMA in power. These other elected officials and or appointed officials or whatever uh, can't even review what FEMA does for the first six months. We are winning and will win. Who is winning here? When there is a presidential disaster declaration for all 50 states over an invisible enemy. And this is how these things happen. We have wars on literally invisible enemies. The war on drugs? Where is that enemy? When will that war ever be over? The war on terror? Where are they? If you've noticed that they're, boy, ever since this whole worldwide quote pandemic has been going on we haven't heard about any terror we haven't heard about any war we haven't heard about any mass shootings nothing it's all quiet except for stay in your house isolate yourself don't talk to your friends unless you're talking with some sort of telecommunication where we all know that it's not as good as looking somebody somebody in the face or being able to hold their hand where you can easily just be recorded by the big NSA accumulation centers you know I don't even know what you call them I know of at least two all the Snowden revelations where no they actually record the conversation on your phone as well it's not just a bunch of metadata so anyway I'll, I'll just continue on here oh. <laughs> Here, if the fake news opposition party is pushing with all their might the fact that President Trump, so, and is he even writing these things? Or, you know, I don't know. Does he refer to himself in the third person a lot? Ignored early warnings about the threat. Why did media and Dems viciously criticize me when I instituted a travel ban on China? They said early and not necessary. Right, and well, that, and he, yeah, and now, oh, he didn't do enough, and whatever. I mean, this scenario is perfect for a global takeover. You get a lot of people that do care about freedom and do care about our country to support somebody that is doing all the things that you would push against should it be somebody else and this is my th like I said this is the first time I've ever really spoken against what Trump has been doing well not the first time well the first time that I did I was really bent when we bombed Syria over a bunch of fake news and a bunch of my Republican friends were yay yay <laughs> and I'm just thinking like have you never heard of Senator Black have you not heard the Moriarty stories have you but no these people don't even know who and what I'm talking about which is disconcerting I mean things things like this are why I don't even go to church because the church is they're not talking about anything that matters. They say, oh, all that matters is 
spreading Jesus Christ and everything else. It, I guess. But I'm pretty sure that Paul spoke to authority and he did use the rights that he had as a Roman citizen to speak against the governing powers whether they were Jewish or Roman and um, all this stuff I hear about well render unto Caesar you know I, I seem to recall also in history that you know Christians were used as human torches and everything else I mean if they were just rendering everything unto Caesar kinda how these people just pull that little phrase out why were they being burned as torches why were they being fed to the lions because they were just being nice compliant little citizen citizens I mean it doesn't make any sense listen to Trump here governors get your state's testing programs and apparatus perfected be ready big things are happening yeah no excuses and this this is where I stopped reading because this this statement here this this statement here speaks volumes the federal government is there to help now I seem to remember another president who wasn't perfect you know but and a lot of stuff went in during his administration too from the uh, the vaccine court the Brady Bill um, I think I remember him saying that what is it the nine most dangerous words or I can't remember but I'm fem I'm from the federal government and I'm here to help it's like that's pretty scary if you ever hear somebody saying that you should be afraid right and that was President Reagan but here Donald Trump is saying the federal government is there to help really since when and and listen to this I mean he's telling these people hey governors get your state's testing programs and apparatus perfected right because they want to test everybody and <laughs> testing programs and apparatus you know what does that mean quarantine stations and everything else you know for the people that don't want to get tested for the people that don't want a vaccine for the people that actually want to just go back to work and live their lives and spend time with their family the federal government is there to help that's pretty scary and I'm talking to re Republicans mostly here because you know the Democrats they're gonna hate Donald Trump no matter what he says and unfortunately a lot of the Republicans are just gonna love Donald Trump no matter what he says but the federal government is not there to help just not we are testing more than any country in the world also gear up with face masks you know and I was thinking about this too why all of a sudden this huge push for face masks well guess what facial recognition works best when people aren't wearing a mask and who are all the people that still aren't wearing a mask mostly it's the people that know that this is fake <laughs> Or that maybe there is some sort of flu going around or some corona that's already been around you know but apparently a novel strain so yeah the people not wearing a mask up oh, they're the troublemakers we better round them up 
the the psychological manipulation is amazing even as I sit here and I've been thinking about all the stuff that I've been manipulated by and I generally tend to think of myself as somebody that pays attention <sighs> the federal government is there to help so uh, now I'm gonna just come down some more and Huh. I, you know, I don't even know. But these last few, twi you know, this here, this, where's the presidential seal here? Did anybody see it? The coronavirus initially, and he responded by playing Where? back clip showing it's that the press there. did the same. Now, CNN has a tenuous claim on being a news outlet in the best of times, but why? by the end of today's briefing, they were like an Oberlin whip. Why, why is the presidential seal not there in front of the White House news briefing? I, is it because he is no longer the president, as I've heard some say? Is, is that really true? I mean, look, do you see it there? I don't. I don't see it. This is Fox News, Tucker Carlson, right? This is Donald J. Trump tweeting. And, um, <laughs> it's not it's real it's not there oh man so anyway i'm if there is an election coming up I'm I'm not voting for either for any candidate that they throw up there because it's not a choice. You know what what do you want? Do you want just a nice steamy log or do you want a bowl of diarrhea? That's the choice. And I'm, I, at this point, I'm not voting for any, either one, whether it's some guy who can't remember what he's saying or another guy that is actually very smart but dumbs down his conversation to make it more appealing. I don't know. I don't know. So we're in monumental times and we need to wake up. We all do. <laughs> but I unfortunately I, I don't think anything is gonna stop. All right, until next time.